Hey guys, Luke here. For today's video, I'm here to talk about the Dragons. They have sacked... Oh, I don't even think I can say it. I, just, I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. I never saw this coming. They've sacked Paul McGregor. Mary McGregor has been sacked. Uh, I don't know about you guys. I, I can't see why he would have been sacked. Um, honestly, I, I really don't know what to say here. I mean, you look at the Dragons' results over the last couple of years and you, you think, wow... He, he's definitely hard dumb. Oh, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, probably the worst kept secret in like the whole year. Uh, Paul McGregor has been sacked by the Dragons. Honestly, as much as I was joking just then, I am a little bit shocked. Um, more so the timing of it. Now, a month or so ago, if you'd said Paul McGregor has been sacked, I would have went, yep, about right. Probably deserved. But weirdly enough, I actually think the Dragons have been playing half decent the last month or so. Um, they haven't exactly been getting the results, but they've actually been taking on some pretty tough competition. Uh, I know they pushed the Roosters. Uh, you know, they, they've, I think they played Rabbitohs and played half decent against them. Uh, you know, they've had some decent results, um, especially compared to the start of the season. And it's like they kept him then, so why all of a sudden now has he been sacked? So uh, that part, it does confuse me a little. Now, the rumours that have been going around, I don't even know if it's rumours at this point. I think players have confirmed this, but apparently Shane Flanagan has been coaching the attack. And I've got to say, the attack for the Dragons has looked quite good as of late. Uh, I think Adam Clune has been a great addition to him. Moving Ben Hunter, Hooker, McInnes to lock, I think, while detrimental to McInnes as a whole, I feel like to the Dragons side, it works better. Um, ben Hunt, I think he can do a job at halfback um, or 5'8". But in terms of the rest of the side, I feel like his best position is the number nine. So sort of in the same sense, like you can play Cameron Smith at halfback, but you're better off playing him at, at the nine. Similar ways, Ben Hunt. Like he can play in the halves, but I think you're better off playing him in the nine. So I think he definitely becomes maybe not like the elite, elite sort of hooker. But I, I do think he is an upgrade on McInnes. McInnes, I really do rate a hooker. If he signed with the Bulldogs today, I'd be ecstatic. But in terms of, if, if you've got the option of the two of them, which they do, I feel like Ben Hunt is your pick. I mean, he's got experience um, in big games and that sort of stuff, even though he hasn't particularly played amazing in those. But uh, he, I, I feel like he's played enough hooker that I feel like that's probably his best position now. I think all the media has said for a long time that's his best position. I think he's now sort of starting to embrace it. So uh, maybe, uh, was it Griffin? I can't remember. Griffin, Henjack? I'm going to say Griffin. Uh, maybe he was onto the right idea when he had him coming off the bench at hooker. Maybe that wasn't so crazy after all. But yeah, Ben Hunt at the hook position, I think it's fitting quite well. The one player who has really, really surprised me has been Zach Lomax, though. Um, honestly, going into the season, I didn't rate him at all. All the hype leading up to him uh, debuting and then him debuting and stuff... I was talking about how good he was, and I saw Denim Kemp mention this as well. So, and I'll say if Denim Kemp's saying it, well, then you know it probably says a lot because he does hype up a lot of players, doesn't like to talk players down, and that usually speaks pretty positively. Uh, but he did talk about Zach Lomax, and he was saying, you know, I and pretty much it echoes what my thoughts were, and probably what a lot of people's were was that like this dude was hyped up, but I just I don't see it. He hasn't produced anything on the field, and now all of a sudden he is, and you're like, okay, there you go. That's what they were talking about. So there has been a lot of improvements, which is why it's all the more shocking that McGregor has been sacked. Now, I think McGregor, absolute shocking coach. I don't, like, you can look at their side, you know, you might look at this year's side and say maybe not the best, but even then, their four-pack is still quite strong, and they've got, they've got a good enough squad to be better than where they are, is what I'm saying. I don't, I'm not, I don't expect them to win a, win a comp or anything with that squad, but they should at least be competing for the eight, and instead they're competing for the wooden spoon, and that's actually a fact, Com competing for the wooden spoon. Similar ways to the Broncos, you know? They don't have to be world beaters, but just don't, don't be competing for the wooden spoon. Like, come on, that's like that's a joke. It's a joke. At least when the Bulldogs, uh, you look at their side, and you can say, yeah, there's probably like half a reserve grade team with like a few first graders in there. The Dragon side has like a good part of, you know, either the Queensland or New South Wales origin team. Look, so Frizzell's there, uh, Tarek Sims is there, Trent Merrin has played there. I know he's kind of passed it a bit, but you know he's been there. Ben Hunt's there. Uh, Corey Norman played Origin last year. They've got a host of players with, um, or even like Paul Vaughan. They've got, they've got a host of players who've had either international experience or uh, rep experience. James Graham was another one who's left now, but who's another one there at the start of the season who has been there for the past couple of seasons. So, yeah, they definitely have a squad that is the talented squad, and they just haven't been able to put it together. And you've got to say, it's definitely going to be down. It's got to be down to the coaching, right? Because a lot of these players have played well elsewhere or have played good at some points um, during his tenure. The, similar to the Dean Pate situation. 
you can't sit there and say, yeah, this is a reserve grade side or this is a shit squad when we've seen them play good. Last year, we saw the Bulldogs play good. The last two seasons, we've seen them play good at the back end of the season. So for people to say, look, it, it like definitely is a reserve grade side. Yeah, there are some players in there, uh, there, but there is there was something there. They were able to win, and then for them to start the season so badly and not win, well, something is wrong, going wrong there. And that same can be said for Paul McGregor. We've seen them get results. We saw them... I can't remember what round they got to. It was the one where I think they, they versed the Rabbitohs. I'm going to say prelims. No, not the prelims. The one before the grand final qualifier. Uh, quarterfinals, I think it was. Um, you know, they, they smashed the Broncos and then they went and played the Rabbitohs. Had a good lead. Ended up blowing it with field goals. Um, but they put themselves in position to be to you know, right in the end. And the Dragons are synonymous for being really, really good up until probably about origin time and then dropping off. Like, it, it is a Dragons thing. They usually start the season so well. And the fact that they haven't this season, like, this was the season Paul McGregor needs to go. And, obviously, they've pulled the trigger on it. Dean Young is now going to be uh, the coach. I suppose everyone's going to have those rumours of, well, is Shane Flanagan going to be allowed to coach early? Is he going to secretly be coaching? Look, I think Shane Flanagan has probably secretly been coaching already. Maybe even Paul McGregor, maybe the results are more of a reflection on Shane Flanagan, maybe, than Paul McGregor. Maybe that's how the board's looking at it. Maybe they've kind of let Flanagan take the reins for the last month since all of those rumours of McGregor going, and they said, well, let's see what he can do. And now they've sort of played better. They have went, yeah, well, it must be McGregor. We need to get rid of him. Maybe that's what's happened. I don't really know. I'm just speculating at the moment. I think that's what it comes down to, just a lot of speculation. I feel like with the Dragons, there's so much speculation all the time. We just seen you and Aiken that just left. Uh, there's just rumours of players leaving all the time, and, uh, you know, is McGregor in? Is he out? Uh, fans want him out. Is he in and out? Um, so for fi- something to finally like officially happen, seeing Aitken's left, uh, they got a new coach in. So next season for the Dragons, I don't know what it holds. Um, if Dean Young is going to be their full time coach, it's not a lot on the market at the moment. But I suppose for guys like like those Steve George Arlises and Todd Payton that sort of stuff, it does present them an opportunity. Uh, considering the Cowboys' jobs up for for the grabs at the moment. I think probably the Broncos one will be up soon. And then also the Dragons. There's a couple ones um, going. Nathan Brown's taking the Warriors. But I feel like next season's definitely going to have a, a different feel to the NRL with all the coaches. I feel like there's been a pretty high turnover rate compared to some of the previous seasons. Uh, but yeah, with the Dragons losing Frizzell, lose, losing you and Aiken, uh, they just lost Tim Lafoy as well. Um, I feel like they have lost a few players. Um, and they better watch out that they don't lose guys like Tristan Saylor. Uh, seems like that Saab's going to leave. I feel like there's going to be a big exodus. James Graham's already left. So I feel like the Dragons... Uh, they've been talking about Warriors doing a rebuild. I feel like the Dragons are uh, pretty close to having to do a rebuild because the side that they've got, it just doesn't work on paper. I mean, Corey Norman's been rumoured to go. Uh, yeah, just McGregor couldn't get them going, and I feel like he's held them back in a, in a period where they probably should have been progressing to go on and challenge for a premiership. They've regressed to now challenging for the wooden spoon, and I feel like they've missed their premiership window because of how mediocre they were and how mediocre the coaching was. So McGregor going for me, uh, I think it is a good thing. And I think Dragons fans will agree. And I think NRL fans in general will agree. Uh, well, maybe oppositions won't because Dragons were kind of like a, a game you can look forward to and say, yeah, probably. I mean, even the Bulldogs are going to win on them. And that's got to mean something this year, right? Uh, they, they did beat us the second time, which uh, they, they were a lot better. But it still was a bit of a contest. But... Yeah, McGregor, it's, just, it's, been, it's been coming for years and years. It's more of where do the Dragons go from here? Uh, do they sort of just keep going sideways and competing uh, for the wooden spoon? Or do they make some strong signings, uh, bring in a solid coach, and then uh, and go from there and push for that aid? Or do they just stay where they are? It rem- remains to be seen. I'd love to hear you guys in the comments section below. What do you guys think of the Dragons? Like, was McGregor, was he deserved person to be sacked or unlucky? Like, who, who should they sign? I feel like that should be a discussion we should talk about because I, there's not really that many coaches who are on the market. Like, Dragons can't really go out and sign a big proven coach because there is none on the market at the moment. Uh, so they're going to have to go for another sort of unproven guy. Dean Young uh, is coaching now. He's got the rest of the season probably. Maybe he's going to do a good enough job that he'll get the gig, at least until Shane Flanagan's there. Uh, well, then Shane Flanagan can secretly coach. They can have uh, a bit of a shadow ghost coach. You have ghost riders. We have ghost uh, ghost coaches. Maybe that's the new thing. But uh, yeah, I really don't know where the dragons go from here. But at least I don't think they can get any worse than what they are. 
Uh, I mean, obviously, they can win the wooden spoon. I don't see it happening. Their squad's just too talented for it. Too many good individual players to at least um, get them out a, a few wins, which is all you need to avoid the wooden spoon at this point. But, yeah, just in general, that, that's not what the Dragons should be. They, that's not what they're about. It wasn't so long ago that they were a bit of a force, like a few good years where they were competing for the Premiership. Wayne Bennett left, and it's been downhill ever since. Uh, Steve Price, now McGregor. Hopefully, for Dragons fans, they... Uh, they actually get a good coach because um, they've had a few pretty shitty ones uh, as of late. Anyway, guys, I think that's where I'm going to end the video. If you did happen to enjoy it, leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Also, make sure to turn on the notification bell. It lets you know when I upload straight away. So go ahead and do that. Also, follow me on social media. It's on the screen right now. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.